We're so glad that you're with us today. And uh, we're going to have a great weekend this weekend. Uh, Saturday at 4 o'clock, you're going to listen to us, uh, or you may be listening Sunday at 6. You catch us on Spotify. You can catch us on Facebook. You can catch us on YouTube. KXEX 1550 AM, and I'll tell you what, we talk politics, education, religion, technology, sports, values, and healthy communities, and anything you want to talk about, and we just have an absolutely great time. And I I want to remind you that Good News with Larry Powell, nothing but good news. You can hear a great vignette Monday through Friday at 10 and at 4 on KXEX, and would just encourage you to tune in or catch Spotify because I know a lot of you out there like to take those long walks during the morning, uh, maybe in an afternoon when you get home, and you can listen to some great stories just by going to Spotify. We're so glad you're with us, and today I have a fantastic uh, guest with me, a good friend, Clint Olivier, Um, and we're going to talk. Clint, uh, welcome to the show. We're just so glad to have you with us. Well, when I saw you pop up on on my phone, I thought, oh, this is fantastic. I (laughs) I jumped at the opportunity, and I thank you for having me. Well, you know, uh, me being an educator and uh, and 43 years officially in education and another 10 years after retiring, I'm still doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I was uh, energized and, and, uh, and thought, this guy has chosen to leave the world of politics and city council and go into a world of politics in a different way with education. And you're in for an interesting ride, my friend. Well, (laughs) I, I agree. I agree. And for, for you and, and your audience, if they pray (laughs) to think of me and my colleagues in Clovis, because it's, it's going to be a, 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 a tumultuous four years as not just as, as, as education changes, but as California changes, as the the nation changes and and, and evolves and education will not be immune. So as the the difficult issues come forward um, and and we tackle those and we tackle those, there are are good folks who want to do the right thing on there. Exactly. we, we need we need blessings yep. as we go forward. No doubt. Because well, we'll, Clovis is special. It is, absolutely. In fact, it's in the top 100 districts in the nation. Wow. Uh, lots of really good things. And and I, I've been blessed. My daughter graduated from Clovis uh, West High School, so wow. I've got a lot of connections. And then having been county superintendent, worked with Clovis during those years as well. Uh, and I've had the, a good chance to consult with them on a number of issues over the years. So they're they're a great group of people. I have a lot of admiration for what they do. I love their teachers. They've got some great folks. Their bus drivers are are wonderful, yeah. wonderful folks. You know, and I talk a lot about classified people set it up for educators to do the job in the classroom. Sure. And so when you're a bus driver and you get to say to a kid in the early morning when you're picking them up, I'm so glad you're on my bus with me and you get to go to school. Good morning. And I get yeah. to take you. Yes. So you set it up for it being a really good thing. We're going to talk more about that, but I want our listeners to know a little bit of who you are, where you come from, uh, some of the things that have happened in your history down the line, because I know you're from Southern California. Uh, you went to Orange Coast College. Yes. Um, my my nieces and nephews went to Orange Coast. It's an Coast. amazing community <laughs> college. It is. And Costa Mesa is a, a really good, cool place. It is. Yeah. And then you spent some time at Long Beach At Long as Beach well, State. Mm-hmm. Uh, in communications. Speech yes. Communications and things. So you, you kind of had a history that got you ready for the media world that you ended up in. And then a lot of things you're doing now. But I thought, let's talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what was it like growing up as uh, Clint Olivier, uh, you know, in Southern California? It was, uh, I, I always knew that I wanted to do broadcasting. I love I, it. I always knew that I, there, I always hoped that there would be a place for me in, in the public realm, yep. in the public discussion. Uh, not one of these kids that, oh, I'm going to grow up and be president, but I, I want to, I want to grow up and, and be of service. Have an impact and have service. Sure. Yeah. And you know what? I think that, that I was, I think that there must have been some kind of divine intervention to bring me here, to Neat. bring me to the Valley, to bring me ultimately to Fresno. It's Fresno. a good place, isn't it? It's a good place because if, if you're trying to make it, it's a, it's a place where there's an awful lot of opportunity. Yes. And by that, I mean. The folks who have already made it in Fresno, whether it's in politics or or uh, the church or education or media or manufacturing or 
or uh, agriculture. It's a it's a place where the folks who've already made it yep. are happy to welcome new people in. And that's and an amazing thing, isn't it? I, I've lived in a few different places, yeah. out of state and here are other places in California. And I, I'm wondering if my assessment is correct, but I really think it is. I think that the, it, the elites, yes. the folks who've already made it in Fresno, and, and they're happy to bring in new and then to mentor and then to help That's and cool. to advise. I, I have found that, and, and you have helped me, and, and others have helped me yeah. in my career. And I, I, other people I talk to will, will attest to the same thing. They'll say, oh, you know, I got a lot of help from so-and-so or, the, yes. you know, the people at, at, uh, at, at Clovis or, or the people at City of Fresno or the people at, you know, Fresno City, they help me. They bring me along. And so for a young person, for someone who's just starting out, if they want mentorship, if they want, all you have to do is ask. ask. And, and yep. people do make time. In Fresno, they do. and that's why I think it's divine intervention that brought me here. I came here in '06 as a as a freelance reporter for for Channel 30 Action News. Yes, and, and that's it's, when it's, we first met. Yes, <laughs> and since then, Larry, I've yeah. been able to get involved in a number of different things. But people have been more than happy to welcome me in and to advise and to mentor and say, ah, maybe you know, maybe you don't do that. Maybe instead you you go in this direction. Sure, and I feel like I'm. I'm very pleased with where I've ended up. Yes. And that's because it's, I guess to me, it's called the, that means sometimes you hear this and it's a negative connotation. They say the Fresno factor. No, the Fresno factor has been really positive for me. Yeah, I love and I'm it. very grateful to, to, to everyone uh, who I've encountered in, in my career that's been so helpful. Well, you know, it's been fun uh, to watch you as you came in as a reporter and then as you maneuvered through life you know, which we all do, sure. but as you maneuver through life into the very fabric of the city of Fresno and all of those things, I, and I want to get to some of that, but I want to ask you, what was it like growing up as, as Clint Olivier? Uh, what, you what know, was your family like, you know, and what did your dad do and stuff like that? My, and you know what? I don't know if I've ever been asked this question <laughs> ever. <laughs> and I, I appreciate it. And yeah. I'm sitting here trying to think, oh my gosh, what do I tell him? Uh, <laughs> well, um, had divorced parents. Okay. And my dad uh, lived in Huntington Beach. My, gotcha. my mom was in L.A. County. And then my mom said, uh, I want to move. Where do you want to live? And I said, well, move to Huntington Beach. And they ended up being about a mile apart. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so you got to see both of them regularly. Oh, yeah. yeah all the good. time. And, the, and I wasn't, I mean, I played football okay. for, for three years in high school. I was an average student. Um, I did some student government, I guess. And I, I did, um, like academic decathlon. Okay. I, I'm good at trivia. Yeah. Yep. So I did some of that, but I, I, um, well, mock I trial, I never uh, did it. Is that right? No, I never did it. Those well, were the, those were the really to, smart kids. Did you go to Huntington high school? I went to, um, Huntington beach Edison. Okay. So I was at Edison high school. Yeah. Cause they were really well known for mock trial and uh -huh. a bunch of other things. I know Huntington was the winner. No, those are the, those are the really smart <laughs> kids, Larry. Yeah. Uh, and, and no, I, I guess I, I, I did a lot of, uh, reading and I, okay. I kind of, um, the well-rounded man. Well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have an awful lot of friends. I wasn't okay. always going out and doing stuff. Here's what I did. Okay. I just, I just thought of what I did. <laughs> I worked as soon as I, I think it was before I turned 16, okay. I got a work permit and I worked I love and it. I worked at thrifty drugstore <laughs> and I good. scooped ice cream and I, I clean, uh, mopped the floors. Larry, from the time I started working, I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and graduated from high school and worked and worked and worked, and worked. I've, I've never had a, a, any downtime since I was 16 years old. Wow. Because wow. I was struggling to find an answer. You asked me, what, yeah. was, what was the childhood like? No, I, I, had, I had good parents. I have good parents. And they were very uh, supportive and positive all the time. But you asked, what did you do? And I thought, well, yeah, I played <laughs> football, but I didn't really play. And, and you know, I, um, yeah, I, I read some books and. And I did some of this and some of that. And I thought, well, gosh, what am I going to tell Larry? What did I do? <laughs> I don't sound very interesting. And then I thought, well, work. Well, you work. Know what, it man. was the best thing for young, a young kid was work. Every skill that I picked up behind the ice cream counter at Thrifty Drugstore, yep. I used those skills Scooping in the that news. Scooping double chocolate. 
You know? Absolutely. <laughs> I use those skills in the news. Yes. I used them in politics. I use them right now. Yeah. I use them in business. Um, work is the best thing for a young person. Oh, I agree. I agree. You know, when I was county superintendent, uh, I encouraged uh, career tech, you know, mm-hmm. let's, let's find ways for that to work because it's so important. I remember the story I used to tell about my refrigerator breaking and uh, a guy came in and uh, in about three minutes fixed it. And I said, well, how much for the part? And he said, $3 for the part and then 97 for knowing where to put it. Right. You know? So, yeah. And I'm willing to pay it. You sure. know, we need career tech. We need those kinds of things. And I know you've got a lot of things you're going to be facing. The world of work sets you up for One, what it's like to do life. 100%. Yeah. Listen. Well, folks, uh, I'm so glad you're with us. And we've got Clint Olivier with us. And uh, what a great time we're going to have today. Thank you for being here. Stick with us. We're going to be right back. And you're listening to KXEX 1550 AM. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. Best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to uh, Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. And we're so glad that you've joined us again. And if you weren't listening to the first uh, segment of the show today, uh, go catch it on Spotify or Facebook or YouTube. Uh, uh, It's informative to know who your leaders are and where they come from and what informed their decision-making processes and things like that. That's why uh, Clint uh, Olivier is with us today. And uh, Clint, I just love talking to people about what was it like being you early on you, so you, we see who you are today? You know what? I have to tell you, I, I've, I've been interviewed hundreds of times <laughs> on a variety of issues. Yep. I've been on many shows. I've been, I've been all over this valley. And, you know, look, it, to be in politics, yep. I, did, I did eight years on the city council, and then I, took, I did four years. I've been in business, private industry. Right. And now back again, I get to do private industry and Clovis, and Clovis school, board. school Board. I get to do both. But I've got to tell you, no one has ever asked me about my childhood. <laughs> and, that's and I have to tell you, you've thrown me for a loop. <laughs> I've never that's been good. asked because I didn't have an answer prepared. Yeah. You yeah. know, a lot of us, we you do these the interviews. the best answers when that happens. Oh, you no, know you that? did. And I have to tell you, I was, I was panicking a little bit because I thought, no one's ever asked me about my childhood before. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, but I, I think that by asking that you did get an answer out of me that was worthwhile well, because I, you got out of me something I've never yeah. told anyone before was that as a, as a, as a teenager, I was working my butt off <laughs> and I enjoyed it. I liked having my I own money Yes, and it enabled me to, uh, you know, my first mentor was my store manager. Oh, I love it. That's and the good. things that I learned in that thrifty drug store in 1990 and yes. 91 and 92 yes. are the things that made me the person I am today. It, so uh, thank you for asking me, well, but you did throw me for a loop. <laughs> and remember, thrifty ice cream used to be some of the best ice cream around. No, it still is. It's I know, out there. I know. But is it's it more. Rite it's, Aid now or it's something. It's Rite Aid. Yeah. But it's, they, they still call it thrifty. Uh, yeah. And it, I remember when I did it, it was 45 cents. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I mean, I don't know how much it is, but it, I know it's more than that. Yep. But I remember when I got in, when the people got in line, they would look up and they would look at the flavors and look in the case. Yeah, and, exactly. And then they would say, well, this used to be a nickel, five cents, because <laughs> Thrifty Drug Stores um, was L.A. Yep. And we had it here in Fresno. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had, it's a, it's a, it's a um, SoCal thing, Thrifty, yes. really. Yeah. And they were up here in Fresno. But people would say, oh, looking at this used to be a nickel. <laughs> and now can you imagine working there? Oh. Someone say, well, this used to be 40 cents. Yeah. Because of it's just, it's. Um, well, they generally don't even talk to you anymore. They just get what you ask for. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, that counter was a unique deal back at Thrifty's mm-hmm. in those days. Yeah, it was. And you know what? You, you almost get to learn what a constituent might ask you <laughs> when they're asking you questions no. and saying things like this is only five cents in the past. You're and, right. You know? You're so right. And your it's preparation the, started early. It's the same. Look, at so for anybody out there that, that has uh, kids or grandkids that are starting out or maybe you're even starting out and people who are in customer service, look, it, you're picking up skills. Even if you work, we, we just, uh, and I say we, T-Mobile opened up a, a call center yes. in Kingsburg, and, and they hired a lot of folks. And we've got a, a lot of people in our valley who 
are, are in a call center or in retail or in customer service or something like that. Yep. Hey, don't fret. You're getting a master's level education. Yes. Your, your kids, your grandkids, and maybe even you, you're getting a master's level education yep. in people. How do you deal with angry people? How do you deal with happy people? How do you deal with the, the general snotty nose kid that comes with mom and can't make their minds up? It's true, <laughs> Larry, because you know what? You, you're, you're not getting paid a lot in customer service. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one, you're, but you're building the foundation uh, that's going to get you out of there. That's right. But here's the deal. This foundation, you have to look at it this way. And I know, I know we're in a, we're in an era where, where people are. And I mean, always you listen, Johnny Cash song sings about <laughs> punching his boss. Yes. You know what I mean? Nobody likes it, but the reality is, and, and nobody ever has. And I was going to say, we're in an era where people are hostile to, to the, the, they've always been, listen, Johnny Cash songs <laughs> about stealing from the, the Cadillac assembly yeah, uh, line. Exactly. Right. And, and, and about his boss, like, it's, it's, it's eternal. It's universal. But the reality is, is if you're in a call center, if you're in retail, you, your company pays you what they pay you. But the intangible is what you're learning about. Absolutely. About people. Yes. You're learning patience. You're learning tact. Yeah. You're learning uh, uh, creative thinking. Exactly. You're learning these things. And then guess what? You take them to your next assignment. And you and just then, continue and, to advance from there. And you may be, yeah. your next assignment, maybe 5, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, might be county superintendent. Yeah. Might be um, city, uh, council, city council, board member. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's all what you're building on. Exactly. So well, if, if you get anything from, from this whole pontification, <laughs> get uh, that there is hope. Absolutely. And that Absolutely. there is and that you're not wasting Don't your time. Don't chafe at working. Not at all. Find you're, a job. You're not wasting your time. No, I agree. You know, my dad uh, hired a lot of kids from City College, uh, football players and things at Clifton Company, where we did 26,000 turkeys processed every day. Okay. Uh, and on East Street in California down there. And dad brought all four of us kids from my, my family down there to work. And I'll tell you what, I wanted to go to college. Because right. I was tucking turkeys, you know, I was tucking those <laughs> legs in that butterball. Right. <laughs> and uh, from the time that turkey arrived till it was processed one inch thick, frozen through was one hour. And we had 26,000 oh, birds coming through. Oh, wow. So they and, go from living, clucking or whatever, yes. go gobbling turkeys. Yes. And, to and one then inch to thick a frozen, frozen block yes. in an hour. In an hour. <laughs> and and I, I processed every fourth bird. So okay. I was responsible for that. So dad knew what he was doing because uh, we made good money, but he said, do you want to do this all your life? Sure. And I said, absolutely not. Yeah. And so he said, go to college. Mm -hmm. you know, so we went to college. All of us became successful, all with master's degrees or more. Oh, wow. Well, doing you're... well, you know. Mm -hmm. So and, and we had a mom and dad that were just phenomenal people. Mm -hmm. um, mom was a uh, Missouri speech champion. I mean, she could... She could talk the, the legs off of anybody. I mean, she right. was so good. And humor was, uh, she wrote a poem about me that's, that goes something like this. When uh -huh. folks look at me and would describe me to another friendly guy, they'd say that fellow's really great and can he circumnavigate. They see me in their mind's eye, a fellow keen and very sly, handsome dude with rugged features, one of God's best turned out creatures, a manly type with muscles strong. In fact, in me, they find no wrong, but down inside <laughs> where they can't see... I know that I'm just plain old me. And she wrote that about me when I was a high school senior, had just been elected student body president, but wanted me to remember, don't be more than you are, be who you are, and don't assume you're something special just because you got elected to something. Great lesson. Great lesson. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. But she's, you, she's 98 years old, still around, uh -huh. and still writes, still does all kinds of stuff. Do you perform that poem? I mean, clearly oh, yes. you do because it, <laughs> clearly you've done that before. I have. I, I love that poem because yeah. it tells a lot about you, you know, and mom is absolutely fantastic. We lost dad about seven years ago, but, uh, but mom is 98, still going strong, great really? sense of humor, does she, still does drives. She, does she still write poetry? Oh, yes. Yeah, really? Yes, yeah, she still has her... <laughs> She, she does public speaking with my sister. Uh, they okay. do they do seminars together and stuff. So. Uh, see, I'm learning <laughs> things about you. Oh, it's really cool. Well, now I know where you get it. Yes. Because you, there's a part of Larry Powell 
that's the show, yes, right? The absolutely. show, the showman, absolutely. and that's where you get it. That's that's. And it comes I didn't from know mom. that, so we're learning things well, about one another. Missouri is the show me state. That so is. I'm assuming show, show me. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so it's really cool. But hey, I want to get back to a couple of other things sure. uh, about you. So uh, tell me about your your sons. Okay. And, um, and your your kids in have, general. Have well, that's all I've got are sons. Yeah. Okay. My three sons. Yes. Um, I have Conrad, who's 18 years old. Okay. And, and he, what did he say about you getting elected to uh, the office? Oh, isn't that awful? Is a, what he said is cool. I, I thought that was so. Pretty he's funny. kind of a. Um, I mean, he's an establishment guy. He's a okay. conservative guy. Yeah. Um, but there's a rebel streak in him. <laughs> and so the day I got sworn in, he was kind of. Uh, blase about it yeah. he was kind of nonchalant but he was there i had two of the three there the third one is out of control and and three years old he was not invited yeah. um but um um conrad was there and and i i said well son don't aren't you aren't you proud of me yeah and he said he looked at me and he said well you know uh, uh now that you're in there you are part, part of the of problem, the problem. <laughs> and and you have to go. Oh, I love it. It was my <laughs> first day, and he was saying, well, you're part of the problem, yeah. so you need to be voted out. <laughs> my own child. Uh, so, no, he's great. And I love he, it. He's at Orange Coast College, and he's okay. looking to transfer so to that uh -huh, plan. Yeah. second generation to, yeah. to be a pirate. And so uh, <laughs> he's looking to, to transfer in the in the spring to a uc okay and uh, cool. he wants to go into um sports uh organizational uh like management uh, oh cool like derek franks at the grizzlies yeah, or some yeah. of these guys that, yeah. that do that is he uh, interested in the raiders we could use some sports management in the raiders well I'll if you, you have a contact he would love <laughs> to intern or or, yeah, or, really. or sell hot dogs or something for the raiders yeah. so he he's just starting out i love it and he started a business where um, he he bought a power washer and he will clean uh, these uh, these trash cans yeah. in in Newport Beach. I love it. And so he's very busy with that, and he had t-shirts and polo shirts made up at the. Cool. cool. And so he's he so he's got school and he's got that and he's got a great girlfriend, um, and and he's in, involved in his church. I love and it. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. I'm very very proud of him. That's cool. He lives down there in um in Southern California. Now the two that are up here with me um are both crazy and rambunctious and uh started started my second family later in life yeah so here i am before you 47 years old uh, we'll be 48 in april and i've got a, a three-year-old oh boy i love it and he energy requirement oh my gosh <laughs> i don't i don't hold so, that thought some gonna... days larry <laughs> some days i i pass out and yeah. i just go to sleep yes i hear you well <laughs> When we get back, we're going to hear more about the three-year-old and uh, what's going on. But you're listening to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. We're so glad you're with us. My special guest today is Clint Olivier, a uh, former council member and now a board member in Clovis Unified. And we'll talk a little more. Thanks for being here. See you in just a bit. You're listening to Powell to the best talk in town. You know, that's Mark Lowry doing that music, and uh, I just love the idea. Some things never change. Sometimes we take that as, oh, man, some things never change. Well, this is God's love and faithfulness never changes. So we're really pleased that you're listening to us today because as a pastor at People's Church, uh, I just love what God's doing in our community. A lot of good things are happening. And I just want to remind you that you can catch good news with Larry Powell, nothing but good news, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m., 4 p.m., catch a good story. Or go to Spotify, Facebook, YouTube. You can find the same thing. But we're glad you're with us. And uh, we're back with Clint Olivier. And uh, Clint, uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's really fun for me to have people get to know you on a different level. Uh, you know, and I do like digging a little oh, bit Oh, I, I don't like it. No, I don't like it. You're, I don't you're like an it. interviewer too, though, no. you know? <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't like this. Isn't I like I like people to say, oh, hey, Clint, you know, how did... You know, what do you think of the state assembly? Or yeah, what do really. you think of the, the city of Fresno? <laughs> no, I like to be asked that, but I, I don't like it. I no, know. I'll tell you. Well, I like the conversation that's coming out of it, you. Well, you but know, I would rather talk about this some is a, political This is our thing. own fireside chat. It is. <laughs> okay. So tell me about Karsten. Okay. Uh, you know, because I've, se I've seen him, I think, in a tuxedo yes. on Facebook. And, yes. And some comments that were made there. I mean, it's been really fun no, following we, I have a, what you're doing. You I know? have an odd, eccentric family. I really do. And 
But I guess I'm kind of an odd eccentric person, yeah, and I so it. I think it suits. They suit me. Yeah, all of them. They're sympathetic, no doubt about uh, absolutely. it. Absolutely, no. Karsten is nine, <laughs> and he is. Um, uh, he he's obsessed with baseball. Okay. He's obsessed with. In fact, it. he keeps statistics, if I remember he, correctly. He keeps track of his his, own um, his strikeouts and his hits. Yeah. And. Um, 68 uh, hits out of 220 strikeouts, no, if I he, remember. No, he has struck out. You're, you're, <laughs> this has got to be the most well-researched program I've ever been on, Larry. Yeah. Um, no, he has a, a, an acumen for pitching I love it. a baseball. Yeah, good. And I, I didn't encourage it. It came out of nowhere. Just natural to him. And he's self-taught. Oh, I love it. And so he's nine years old now, and he's been playing baseball for six years wow. since he was three. Yeah. And um, it's just something that he does. And cool. he's he's a student of of the game. He's a student of baseball. Yeah. And um, does he know Aaron Judge? The uh, not, character? not personally. No, but but has, he, has he followed uh, that career? Larry, he follows um, um, Cy Young's career oh, and I love it. Jackie Robinson. <laughs> he studies the history of baseball. How cool. His favorite um, historical baseball player, and you should Google this guy. Okay. Everyone should because it's a, it's a crazy, crazy story, is a guy named Rube Waddell. Wow. And Rube Waddell played at the turn of the last century. And if you like good stories, Rube was either – very eccentric or very unwell. Okay. <laughs> he he would, um, if he heard a siren going by, he'd run off the mound, leave the stadium, and go to the wherever the, the firemen went wow. to help them put out the fire. Is that right? But in his day, he was probably as good as, if not better than Cy Young. Wow. He was in exhibition. Rube Waddell. Rube Waddell. He would... He was such an – I'm telling this story because this is how you learn about my son, Karsten. Okay. Rube Waddell was known in exhibition to order his teammates off the field and could strike out all three batters without them putting the ball in play. And this is my son, <laughs> Karsten's favorite ball player. Oh, I love it. Well, that's a that, good choice. He's that serious about it. But that's the guy a high was, level of aspiration. Larry, the guy was eccentric. He'd arrive at the ballpark late and, and would – disrobe and dress as in his uniform <laughs> as he's walking to the field for all the people would see him standing there in his in oh, his underwear i gotta read about this guy. he was I fantastic to... so my my nine-year-old son this is his his favorite guy rube waddell it. we've got a picture of him <laughs> in his bedroom um <clears throat> we uh have a cat see now you've got me i've got you going now you've That's got good. we have it we just got a kitten for for the boys i i bought it or i got him on facebook he was going to be homeless yeah. And I said, well, what do you want to name this cat? And my son, Carson, said, name him Rounder. And I said, what do you want to name him Rounder? I mean, it's a good cat name, but why? Yeah. Because the, the game that was played, the stick and ball game played in England that was the oh, predecessor yes. of baseball was yes, Rounder. Rounder. Yes, yeah, Rounder. I remember. Yeah. And so that is what my son named his cat. So cool. that's what he cares about. Now, he goes to Nelson in Clovis Unified, and, and that's how I got involved. Yeah. Because he's really my whole life. <laughs> my my nine year old he takes up a lot of my time and energy, um, but that's that's his story. It's all baseball. I mean, he's playing flag football now, and he's good at that too. Yep. Uh, but nothing like baseball. I love it. Nothing. You like know, baseball. that's a great segue to you being a board member. Okay. You know? So uh, you were telling me a story when we were in break beforehand, uh, before we even got started today, about how you got into the uh the inner workings of the school district to begin mm -hmm. with at nelson so sure uh, tell me a little uh, and tell our our audience a little more about that yeah absolutely um my my wife alicia gallon yeah uh, and i um un unfortunately in circumstances we we divorced in yeah. uh in 2020 um but the the divorce that that we've had the arrangement that we have is is a is a very intimate and um the co-parenting. Yeah, that's cool. And so we live very close to one another. Yeah. Uh, and the kids see both parents every day. Perfect. Um, but uh, we had an opportunity to send the Karsten to Clovis School. And that was something that we decided. I mean, we didn't, there was no discussion. Yeah. We just said, okay, well. But you live in Clovis I Unified. I live in Clovis Unified. As a board member. Yes. yes. A board, and so, so you have an option. 
and we yes. had that option and and we said well absolutely we're gonna do it immediately yeah and so we registered him at nelson uh and then both of us became involved in the school and i got on the school site council and i i started going to those meetings and i thought oh i, I really enjoy this uh and then the seat opened up the seat opened up and and alicia said you know you ought, you ought to run for that because i'm i enjoy sitting on these boards i'm yes. good at these boards uh, I did a good job on city council because I'm I'm curious. You ask the right kinds of sure. questions. Sure, I'm yes. curious and I want to know and I yeah. want to know how, how does this work? How does this work? And um, so I ran for it and I won, and with the support of my kids and with Alicia's support yeah. and with uh, the support of a, an awful lot of friends who've been there for me throughout the years. Yes. And so I have a different life than I had when I was on city council. I was city council. We were married. And I was city council. We lived at Clinton and Blackstone. Yes. Well, now it's been four years, and and my life is is different now. I I'm in business. I I'm I run a nonprofit organization, BizFed, that that fights for Central Valley business yes. Yes. and jobs. And and now I I'm on, you know, we're we're not married anymore, but we're best friends. Yeah. And I'm on the the Clovis school board, and and we've got these kids that that demand every ounce of attention every penny that we earn <laughs> everything we do is centered and focused around yeah. these kids so my life is different but my life is still the same yes and and i'm really blessed and i'm really thankful and things don't always turn out the way you want them to however and i you know i'm not i'm not you larry i'm not a pastor <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not the eternal optimist that you are. You have a vibe and an energy well. that you give off that, that it, it lifts people. Well, good. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not you, but I can't, and I'm not the, the pastor and the, the spiritual man that you are, but I do go to church and I am a believer yeah. and cool. I can say that, that my life is different, but I remain very blessed yeah, and right. I'm very grateful to God yeah. for, for everything that I have. And, and again, the path turned out a little bit different. However, it's not bad. No, I've been blessed. My family is blessed. My children are blessed. Alicia Gallon is very blessed. Yeah. And, and we do this together and, and it's different, but it's, it's not it's it's great. Yeah, cool. We we have everything because our children are healthy. Yeah. Because we live in California. Sure. Because we have work and and. It's amazing, isn't it? It it is. Yes. It is. Yeah. And now, I sometimes I say, well, how did I end up at this point? I believe that that God had a hand in it. No doubt. On on, on in moments when I was uh, sad or low or feeling. Uh, melancholy or oh these there these are insurmountable problems uh professionally and and in the family and how, how am i going to get through it that yep. there was a force that brought me through it it was god no doubt about it brought no brought it. brought us all through yep. it and here we are on the other side yep. uh and i'm talking to you and i have nothing but good things to report that was god <laughs> i love it let me share with folks uh, uh because a lot of people don't realize clovis unified you were a city councilman for Fresno, but you're on the Clovis Unified Board. Uh, folks, I don't know if you realize, but almost 50% of the students in Clovis Unified live in the city of Fresno. It's true. You know, so that's a whole different deal. So you didn't have to move to the city of Clovis Not to be a part of Clovis Unified. In fact, I think I have you know? to drive 15 minutes to get to Clovis from where <laughs> I am in Fresno. And it was funny in the yep. campaign, in the campaign and, and, and just in talking with people, we'll say, Oh, you know, you're not a Clovis person. You, you're, you know, why are you running? You, you didn't go to Clovis West, and you're not a Clovis person. Say, hey, I'm a concerned parent too. Absolutely. And I am smack dab in Fresno, California, but you know, it's a, a large percentage. I yep. think it's a 45 or more percent yes. of kids that go to Clovis schools, Clovis Unified schools, are from the city of, city Fresno. of Fresno. And and I mean, who better to represent them than a, a Fresno guy? Absolutely. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. You know, and one of the things I really like, and I wish the Fresno, uh, city of Fresno would take more advantage of it. They have Fresno Unified, but they also have Clovis Unified in the city. And celebrate 
both of them. I you can know. I when we come back on the other side I will report to you what we're doing. We're doing I something it. about it. Well, you know what? That sounds like a good teaser and you <laughs> you're good at this, my friend. Uh, listen, we're so glad you're listening to Powell to the people where civility is always in style and we're going to uh, be right back with our last segment. I can't believe how fast this goes. It goes fast. It Radio goes it quick. goes fast. It does. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes and uh, we'll hear the last segment with Clint on the best talk in town. Hey, we're so glad you're back with us, uh, Powell, to the people where civility is always in style. And uh, we're with Clint Olivier. And Clint, uh, you just did a stint uh, for Ray Appleton here recently. Yeah. And uh, Ray, I was telling you uh, during our break that Ray was a sophomore at McLean right. High School when I was a senior. So I've known Ray all of, of his uh, professional life in particular, but from high school on and things in uh, and he's he's an eccentric as well, and oh, always, has had, always has had a, an interesting take on everything. Sure. And, and I enjoy the the show that he has. But uh, we've been, we've known each other I don't know fifty four or five years wow. something like that. So uh, longer than you've been alive, my right. friend. Right. <laughs> right. So, well, uh, listen, uh, Central Valley uh, Valley Business Federation is mm -hmm. that what you're calling? Uh, that's, that's my or, job. Yeah, BizFed. Yeah, Central yeah. Valley Business yeah. Federation. We call it BizFed for short. Yeah, and you're you're doing some work with uh, oil companies. And uh, I know that we had a slogan here in town that ag is uh, a, a part of everybody's life. Sure. You know, and I know you're doing something similar with oil. Yeah. And talking about the impact of oil, not only on the Valley, but California, mm -hmm. and how many jobs are tied to it, taxes yes. that are, are uh, arrived from it. Uh, and the value of it instead of kicking the oil to the curb. Right. You know, so tell us a little well, bit about the, that. Side and I of have life. to tell you, the, now you're asking questions that but I you, really enjoy. I, know, I answering. saw you light up. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I was like, oh, you didn't ask me about my childhood or my family. It's like a therapy appointment. Yeah, I hear you. Um, no, um, so Central Valley Business Federation represents 75, almost 75 uh, entities um, from the grapevine. Uh, through Fresno County. Okay. Okay. So we have Fresno, Kern, uh, Kings, and Tulare. Gotcha. And what makes BizFed interesting is that we we don't just have uh, corporate members. We have association members. Oh, I like so, it. So we have, in Kern County, we have the oil companies, our, our members. So right. we have Berry Petroleum and Western States Petroleum, and we have Chevron, and we have Era Energy and Southern California Gas. Okay. Um, we also have Ag. We have yep. Wonderful Produce. Oh, we have cool. Wawona Frozen Foods from yes. Clovis, yeah. uh, the wonderful Smith Camp Smith Camp family. family. Um, Great people. And, um, and, and, but we have associations. So we have Fresh Fruit Association, mm. the Farm Bureau, Nisei Farmers League, uh, Kern um, Black Chamber. Okay. Um, we have, um, what did I say? I said we had Fresh Fruit Association. Um, we have the Farm Bureau in Kern County. So we have... Um, that's an eclectic group. That's no, it really is. That's really cool. So when, when there's a problem, when one of them comes up, we have manufacturing association, um, uh, associated builders and contractors. So so many different okay. sectors are represented yeah. um, in BizFed. So what happens is we have a board meeting once a month. Okay. Let's say that um, associated builders and contractors um, have an issue. Maybe the, there are a project labor agreement that, that they're opposed to. Sure. For example, they'll bring the issue to the board. The board will vote. If the board uh, approves the vote, well, then uh, my staff member, her name is Melissa Tra. Okay. She does a fantastic job. She and I will begin to lobby against gotcha. it or for it, whatever it happens sure. to be. Uh, then we do social media push. We do letter writing. Uh, I'll, I'll drive around or, or now we do everything by Zoom. We do it. Uh, I'll testify. Okay. And so. Um, and then we monitor that legislation as it works its way through. Well, we want it to die or we want it to, to pass. Uh, and then we notify our members, hey, we killed it. Or, yeah. hey, we, we were part of the coalition that killed it. or, or Worked together with someone. Or got it passed. Yeah. 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 So with my job depends on oil, it's, it's like my job depends on egg. And if you see those green stickers on the backs of people's cars and trucks, I mean, that was about five, six years ago. Took off like wild. Oh, yes. Yes. And the proceeds go to uh, agriculture scholarships for young people. Cool. So what I thought was, well, what if we do my job depends on oil yes. and we sell those decals and the proceeds go to fighting for the working families 
uh, oh, of good. California um, against legislation that would put them out of work. Yeah. And the yeah. state has made no bones about it. The state wants to end the oil industry in Kern County and up here in Fresno County in Colinga. Yep. Um, they want it gone. Uh, it's going to it's going to be catastrophic for so many uh, tens of thousands of families. It's like what's happened to coal, coal sure. back in back West East. Virginia and all of that. It's, it, it, it doesn't make sense when we have the technology to keep things clean in oil and coal and do some things that are really good for us to throw everybody out, you know. Well, and, and families and, and get destroyed. Larry, some of these politicians, they're unabashed about it. They yeah. don't care. Like Hillary said, we're going to put you out, coal yeah. people. Well, we have Gavin Newsom in California that says, oil people, we're going to put you out. Yeah. And we don't care. Uh, look, whether they like it or not, oil is going to be around in California for decades. Absolutely. Because they say, well, we have a, a plan. It's called Just Transition. We're going to transition off uh, oil and go to solar and wind. It's not that... we. We support all energy. Absolutely. We want all energy. There's got to be a good mix in yes. California. And in Kern County, look, in Kern, they do solar. They do wind. They do oil. And they do yeah. it better than anywhere else. <laughs> so we're supportive of that. However, uh, you can't just do away with oil no. overnight. No. And so what we're doing is we're raising awareness. We want folks out there to understand, uh, look, hey, there are a lot of folks not just involved in drilling. But further down the food chain, their jobs depend on oil. So uh, my job depends on oil.com. Yep. Get your decal, <laughs> put it on your car. I put one on my car, uh, and, and we're going to continue to push and raise awareness. Say, hey, please, don't forget that there's a human element here. Yep. Uh, because you do away with oil in California, you still have to import it from the, uh, the OPEC nations. <laughs> you still have to bring it in from and Venezuela. a lot more expensive. A lot more yes. expensive, and we don't know what the living conditions are like exactly. in those countries. Exactly. At least in Kern County, in, in Colinga, in the state of California, where we know that these are good jobs. GED, high yeah. school diploma. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, good. Make 80 grand. Yeah. We will wow. take you. Yeah. So that's, so cool. that, that's why we're in the fight, and, yeah. and we enjoy I it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Thanks for asking about that. Well, you know, uh, there are a lot of good things going on, and you're, you're involved in and so many different things, but I wanted to get back to Clovis Unified just for a minute. Uh, what What is your uh, goal, your dream for what Clovis Unified can be? What What are you wanting to bring to Clovis Unified? Because they're very successful uh, and things, but what do, what do you see as your added value to being a part of Clovis Unified? Well, and, and I've been there. Uh, we had our first meeting this week. Yep. And um, we, we have to hire a new superintendent now. Yeah, because so it only took Amy me. O'Brien is retiring after oh, 26 years. 26 in the district. years started as a teacher yeah, and seven years as the uh, superintendent. superintendent. So, um, no, I, I, I thought, oh, no, I've only <laughs> been there 30 days and I drove out the superintendent and I didn't even I didn't even say anything. You haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. <laughs> no controversy. Uh, yet. No, no. Um, but. No, the reality is I want to figure out what's going on over there. Yeah. So I want to spend, uh, you know, somebody wise told me when I got elected to Fresno City Council, they said, don't say anything uh, for a year. Yeah. Don't speak. That's cool. Just go out there and listen, learn. And, listen learn. and learn. And so that's what I want to do. Okay. I don't want to be uh, very brash and, oh, I'm ripping this place down and I'm going to remake it in my own image yeah. and I'm doing this. No, I'm sincere. I got into this because I care about my kids' education, and Good. I got into it because my family was supportive. Yeah. Um, so now there I am. I have to, I'm going to have to work hard in the next uh, few months Just to hire— Just the reading material well, the you reading have to go through. <laughs> and to hire the right person Absolutely. to be the to superintendent. To perpetuate the, the exactly, excellence. Exactly, to, to yeah. hang on to what we've got. But what do I want to do? I want to make sure—I uh, want to figure out why— uh, Clovis Unified is teaching kids from the same socioeconomic background. Um, they, we've got kids coming from Fresno. We've got them coming from Pinedale and Tarby. Mm -hmm. They go to Clovis Unified schools. Well, they've got the same socioeconomic background of the kids who go to the Fresno schools, uh, but struggle there. Yeah. So I want to figure out what is that, uh, what's the magic sauce? What's the, yeah. What is it that we're doing in Clovis that we can get great outcomes yeah. from some of the kids 
uh, that that may struggle at Fresno Unified. Yeah, and I cool. want to figure out what it is, and I want to make sure that we continue and that we build on it. Yeah. That that we uh, get kids back to school. There's still some that uh, that that are um, waiting for them to come back after COVID. Well, the social emotional, you know, drain yes. that happened is just crazy. And bring you know. them back in. Yeah. And then Good. if I can identify something that needs improvement, maybe mm-hmm. life skills education, more more okay. economics and these kinds of things. I mean, a, a school board doesn't have an awful lot to do. You hire a good superintendent and that person implements the, the, yes. the curriculum. Yep. But I can still be a voice for, you know, hey, career technical education, life skills education like and these kinds of things. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what, you've got your hands full over the next four years. Juggling. (laughs) Juggling an awful lot, Larry. Yeah, I know. You know, uh, uh, education is such a critical thing, and families have been through the ringer with a two-year delay uh, with trying to do everything by uh, computer and distance learning and all of those things. So uh, the governor, uh, many of the things he does drive me crazy, but one thing he did that was correct is providing money for bridging that gap of that social emotional delay that that has taken place. So I know Clovis Unified does a lot of after school programs and and supplementary programs yes. to get kids caught up. And so is Fresno Unified and other places, but it's so good to see that a focus is now back on in the classroom doing the mm-hmm. best you can, uh helping recover from the the separation uh, and I like to call it instead of social emotional positive social interaction. Yes. You know, we're yes. we're back to that and things and uh, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good and I'm I'm thinking you're you're good with it and we're going to do well. I uh, I can't believe how fast four segments have gone, my yeah, friend. Yeah, it went really quick. Uh, listen, Clint, it's really nice to have you with us and to know that you're a Southern Calibo- California boy that became a a Fresnan. You know? I, I am thanks I am for di- joining us. Died in the wool Fresnan. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Folks, you've been listening to Powell to the People where civility is always in style and you know what? Uh, after a year on the board, I'm going to get Clinton back and we're going to see what he has to say. Then. Thank you. Larry. Thanks for being here. It's just great to have you. Uh, we'll see you folks next time.